Hey everybody, Steve Przbrowski here. Welcome to episode 71 of Reach for the Firefighter Badge. Episode 71 is going to discuss more tips to help set up the newly hired firefighter for success. This is part four and in the previous episodes we provided some other suggestions and ideas to make you the best you can be. So let's get going. As we always start out, my two websites, co3firetraining.com as well as shmofire.com, have lots of great free information on there to make you be the best firefighter candidate you can be. Also available on there are two of the three books that I've had published to help you also be the best prepared firefighter candidate. So in the previous episode, number 70, we discussed seven more tips to set the newly hired firefighter for success. So let's continue. More new hire tips. Always have spare coins and bills on you, and bills meaning money, <laughs> on you or near you in your turnouts in your vehicle. What I mean by that is you can never go wrong having a bunch of quarters because quarters almost are universal or even just change. And I know people may say in change, don't we just take everything credit card? Well, when you go to the firehouse, you may have to pay your station or your kitty dues, firehouse dues in change or some more creative folks are taking Venmo or other things. I get that, but always have coins and bills. You never know, especially if technology breaks down. I always like to store some in my turnouts. Um, you know, I always like to, one of the best things I was taught was like in a little safe, secure vial that's not too heavy is to always keep like a $20 bill in there as well as a bunch of quarters, as well as like some singles and some fives. And, and also my vehicle, same thing too. And people are like, why in your turnouts? Well, cause here's the thing. Let's say you get a structure fire at three in the morning and you finish the structure fire. And of course, nobody usually keeps their wallets in their turnouts. You keep them usually in your lock at the firehouse and you're returning from a fire. And it's like, oh my God, it's six o'clock in the morning. Hey, you guys wanna stop? I'll buy you guys coffee or I'll buy you guys whatever, bagels or something else like that. Oh yeah, cool. And of course, uh, I don't have any money. You know, that's why when you're returning from a call or just even during the day, again, you may not have your wallet with you or someone may have forgotten. It's nice to have some spare money with you in your turnouts or when you're in your personal vehicle. Maybe you're going to a bridge and you don't have one of the easy fast passes to go through on the bridge and uh-oh, you know, people don't carry money, but you got to carry some money. Um, it, you, never, you never know if, when you can use it. So have it safely secured in your car and or your turnouts so you can always use it if necessary. Always have a toiletries kit available. When I talk about that, obviously, shaving kit, toothpaste, stuff to brush your teeth, floss, deodorant, whatever it is you have, always have that. And I always encourage a spare kit. Now, when you go to the firehouse, you may have to provide your own bedding, a sleeping bag, your own sheets, or the department may provide that stuff for you, but they're not gonna provide toiletries. So I always like to have two toiletries kits. One that always is with me at the firehouse, then maybe a spare in the car in case something happens. Yeah, I know you can maybe be able to go to the store or not, but you know what? You try not to have to bother your crew with, hey, can we go to the store? I need some deodorant, I stink. Yeah, okay, dude. And even worse, don't borrow someone else's deodorant. And on that subject, number 25, I remember years ago when I was a captain, I had a probationary firefighter. It's like, I remember I had my towel in the bathroom, my towel, my personal towel, it was drying and all of a sudden, it was dry apparently, and next thing you know, I see the probationary firefighter using my towel. And I'm like, uh, hey dude, um, is that your towel? Uh, no, I saw it sitting here, so, and I forgot my towel, so uh, I just used it. I go, dude, that's my towel. I go, it's like, don't use my, don't use someone else's towel without asking. Well, I thought it was, the, I thought the department provided towels, huh? They don't provide towels. No department provides towels, and I know. Bring your own shit, dude. It's like, it's just weird. It's like, it's almost, like I said, almost bad as someone, hey, can I borrow your deodorant? I uh, know. Maybe if it's spray on, it's one thing, but don't be that person that always has to borrow something for everybody. Always have a plan B and a plan C. Some other new, new hire tips. This is a great tip that I think we tend to forget about history and we don't learn from history. Keep some type of notebook or journal um, and pen to keep a journal or log of your activities and your lessons learned. Maybe it's on your smartphone, your iPad, your computer, or maybe it's hard copy with pen and paper, but have a diary. You may not appreciate it now, it's a lot of work to remember to do that, but over the years, you can get some valuable information that you can pass on now, maybe to rookie firefighters or others when they ask you. That's some of the best lessons learned are those that are passed on by others that have gone in front of us. So keep a log of those things. Hey, it may help you out too, maybe if something ever bad, ha something bad ever happens, because let's say you develop 
cancer, sad, uh, sad to say, on the job, or you get injured on the job. Well, you may have to prove it was job related. And you know, that's one of the benefits of keeping a journal of the calls you ran, who was there with you, what you did, what you were exposed to, all those other things. So it's nice to do that if possible, because it may cover your butt at some point. Um, if you're issued a physical probationary binder, most departments will either give you an online binder to get your sign-offs done because, yeah, you still have six months, 12 months, 18 months of probation, but during that probationary time, you're going to have monthly, quarterly tests. You're going to have to refresh yourself on getting signed off on ladders, hose, all the skills again to make sure that you didn't forget them. So if you have a physical binder, which we still provide a physical binder, and that way you can give it to the captain in the morning and he or she can look at it and see your progress or lack of Make sure you make copies of it in case it's stolen. Because I remember one of our probationary firefighters years ago, he left it in his car along with his uniforms and along with his gear. So here he is leaving his car, which was not a, it wasn't in the secure trunk. It was basically visible when you look in the car and, oh wow, fire department uniform. Oh, fire department turnout clothes. Ooh, of course his binder with the fire department logo on it. Someone stole all that stuff. And you know what, guess what? You're on the hook for repaying that. You're supposed to keep that stuff secure. We're not going to pay for that stuff for you. And that stuff's not cheap. That's a couple thousand dollars when you look at turnouts and uniforms and everything else. But the, the worst part was his probationary binder. He was almost done with probation. He's like, well, my binder was almost finished. Okay. Did you make a copy of it? No. Well, then guess what? You're going to have to go through everything again. Well, that's unfair. Prove it. You saying I'm a liar? No, but the proof's in the pudding. You either have it or you don't have it. And what's the big deal? Just, you know, get throw me a bone. No, it doesn't work that way because when something bad happens or now we have an investigation because you get injured or killed, God forbid, guess what? The investigation team, whether it's Cal OSHA or whatever investigative body is now going to say, let's see all the training records to prove that this individual was trained properly. And it's like, well, we don't have his probationary binder because he said it was done, but we just took him on his word. That don't work in a court of law. Your family's going to, is going to, make the department pay for that not to mention your lawyer and everybody else so make copies of it <laughs> screenshots if nothing else because and if not stolen it can get lost trust me that's a sacred binder some other suggestions if you have a phone ipad computer and you have it at the station put a passcode on it Number one, even if you're not at the firehouse, you should have a passcode that is not 1234 or 1111 or 0000. I say that because every now and then I'll come by a firehouse and the crew's out on a call. And I, I, I've seen this where I see three laptops, three people on duty, three laptops in the kitchen table, and they're all open. And you can see what's on the screen. Okay. That's not a smart thing to do, whether you're a firefighter or not a firefighter, because anybody can walk into your station. Well, the front door's locked. Are you sure about that? I bet you I can walk into most firehouses around the country and find a door unlocked or a window unlocked. It happens. Or you left the apparatus bay door open. Those things happen and next thing you know, someone can see what's on your screen or access it or steal your information. Or even if it's not stealing your information, somebody from the department like the battalion chief or anybody that works in the department that has a key can walk in there and then they see what's in, I mean, hopefully it's all appropriate because you're on work, you're at work right now and you shouldn't be doing anything illegal, unethical or inappropriate to violate policies, but have a passcode just to protect yourself if nothing else. And more importantly, trust me, firefighters play games and love to mess with each other. If someone sees that you don't have a passcode there, they're gonna mess with you and you never know what they're gonna do. And last thing you wanna do is have them do something and then two hours later, what the hell is this? Oh my God, I didn't go to that. Yeah, yes, you did. Well, I didn't do it. Well, it's your computer. Well, I don't have a passcode. Yep, that's your problem. It's still yours. That's your fault. Also, don't wait for your captain or crew to ask you what you want to train on. You have that probationary binder, that sign off list. You need to be the proactive one. Good captains or crews will say, All right, Steve, tell me your training plan for the next week, two weeks, three months, whatever you're assigned to them. Tell me what you need to work on. Show me your binder. But some don't. So that means you need to go, hey, Cap, I need these sign-offs. And you may have some lazy crews you work with that don't want to train. I remember hearing stories of, hey, kid, training is for off-duty because we got better things to do, really, like sit in the recliners and watch TV all day. Yeah, that happens, unfortunately. You've got to be proactive enough to say, well, with all due respect, Captain, we were told that no training off-duty because then now it's an overtime issue, which it is. 
unless you voluntarily train, but then that's a whole dicey issue depending on your department and your laws. But anyway, crews, guess what? Newsflash, you're paid to train your probationary firefighters. The new highly, newly hired firefighters are the future of your organization. So you as a probationary firefighter may have to be the designated adult and have the tough conversation with, okay, hey, we were all told that, can you please help me out here? I mean, it's, you gotta be a salesperson. It sucks sometimes. Thankfully, that's far and few, but it may have to happen. But you have to maybe be the one that tactfully and respectfully ask them to assist you. It's your career, not theirs. Because here's the thing, if you don't push it, and then let's say they don't help you and you don't get sign-offs done, and then you fail your quarterly test, it really isn't on them, it's on you. You're the one that may be fired because of that. And it's like, well, that, they didn't train me. Yeah, that's true, we'll deal with them, but you know what, we'll deal with you too. It sucks, that's reality. Also, prepare your family or your pets for you being gone for more than 24 hours. And I say that, 24 hours is long enough, but again, you could be forced into work if your relief calls in sick. That happens, that 24 hour shift could easily turn into a 72 or a 96 or more. Yeah, you're there for four days straight, and if you don't live in the area, you can't, go home. Well, hey, Cap, can I leave to go feed my dog? Uh, no, you're here on duty with your crew. We can't downstaff the engine just because you didn't plan ahead. So that's the challenge. If you do have responsibilities like pets, family members, hopefully you have a good support network at home, maybe other friends, other family members that can help bail you out if needed. Because your employer may told you or volunteer you to stay, hey, you ain't going home for 24 hours or 48 or 72 or more. Or in California, for example, let's imagine you get dispatched to a big mutual aid fire. It's not uncommon for our firefighters to be on duty one day and then be to then be gone for two to three weeks up in the state of Washington, you know, whatever, 14 hours away. Guess what? You better plan ahead. So hopefully things are okay on the home front and it's not a surprise to your family members. Also, know your firehouse, your apparatus, and your equipment inside and out. There is no excuse not to do this. You should know everything within those walls of the firehouse the apparatus, the equipment. If you see a piece of equipment that you do not know how to use, especially on day one, that first day when you get to that new rig, that new firehouse, it's yours to check out. You need to go inside every compartment. What I, I remember what I used to do when I found, when I was assigned a new fire engine, I would take a pad of paper and I would start writing compartment one. This is what's in the compartment. These are all, you know, three wrenches, you know, three, three, um, whatever, um, Two pick head axes, one flat head axe, number, quantity, pieces of equipment. And then if I didn't know how to use something, that first day is your get out of jail free ticket. Meaning if you wait a week or two or three to find or learn a piece of equipment and then on the emergency scene at three in the morning, your captain says, hey, go grab that piece of equipment and go do that to get that person freed from the life threatening emergency situation they're in. Hey, Cap, where's that piece of equipment kept? I don't know where it's kept or even worse, I don't know how to use it. No one ever trained me. I'm sorry, we can't train you in everything. We try our best to train you in everything. But again, that first day is your day to get to that rig. Now, pad of paper may not work, but now with a smartphone or some camera device, take pictures of each of the compartments, document what's in. You should be able to blindfold it at two in the morning, be able to go into every compartment and know what's in it, how many of them, how to use them and everything else. Yeah, that's knowing your rig inside and out. That's your job as the firefighter. That's everyone's job on the rig. So know how to know all that stuff inside and out and ask ASAP. Next, number 32, don't wait to have to be told to do something. Take the initiative. Don't walk by that empty, excuse me, not the empty trash can, the full trash can that's overflowing and just sort of go, well, shit, we need to hire a maintenance person. No, we are the maintenance people. We are the ones that clean the firehouse, clean the toilets, mow the lawns in most departments. So you know what? If you see something that needs to be done, do it. Don't be the one that has to be told to do something. So hopefully you found at least one of these tips in each of the segments, or if, all, if not all of them, to be valuable and something that you have yet to hear. Don't forget, all eyes are on you during the probationary period. And this is, what, this is when you're supposed to be the best, your best. So do it. Because usually most people don't get better after probation. It's, you know, it's usually you're at the peak when you graduate the probationary period. Most people usually stabilize because it's easy to get comfortable. So be on your best. As always, thank you very much for the gift of your time. Please feel free to reach out if I can ever be of assistance to you. So until the next episode, y'all take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon.